Hello chess friends and welcome to Yazar of Chess Channel and welcome back to the World Chess Championship match between the current world champion the England from China and of course the young challenger from India Gukesh. So we're now in the round four of this epic chess event and I think we had already great three rounds two already great winning games the first round was of course incredible with an amazing amazing uh, French defense performed by Dingler where he outplayed with the black pieces Gukesh with white and then in the second round I would say we had a calm game a really nice Joko Pianissimo with really, really great accuracy the game ended with a draw and then we had a great comeback by Gukesh where he outplayed Dingler and with the white pieces and he managed to trap his piece so I think when we watch now all of the games so far it's a fair draw so now we're in the round four uh, where surprisingly we see again a new opening which is I think really great for us usually in World Chess Championship matches we don't see so many deviations when it comes to openings for instance in the World Chess Championship match between uh, Fabiano Caruana and uh, Magnus Carlsen Magnus played very often the same opening this Lasker Pelican the Sveshnikov Sicilian so uh, already here in this game we'll see now again another opening which is really really great great uh, really uh, beautiful and colorful uh, opening preparation now by both sides so let's see now what happened how the game uh four ended in an amazing Zuckertor opening that uh Dingler prepared here against Young Gukesh so with white uh, here uh Ding opened the move to move knight two of three the Zuckertor opening we have now the move d5 and now comes e3 with the preparation to uh, play the move c4 without exposing yourself already with the d pawn move the idea about the Zuckertor opening is to play b3 then to play bishop to b2 and then to have maybe a grip uh, around the square e5 and then maybe launch a flank attack with f4 g4 and similar stuff this is just an idea of course uh white and black don't have to play the game like this but i think the main strategy of this opening is to go like this uh, gukesh continues with knight two f6 and now comes this idea immediately the move b3 and now uh, gukesh plays i think the best way this is now sort of a, i would say a reversed london system idea which is very very useful usually you can get um uh, this similar similar position out of the immediate Nimzo Larsen attack then I think also the best way is to proceed with the d5 then after bishop to b2 you go bishop to f5 so all of this Zucker toward Nimzo Larsen ideas are st simply deviations from a positional idea that white is immediately occupying the dark course and black is of course immediately uh, occupying the light course so you can get really uh, many times the same position out of the different different move order so now as we said f e3 knight to f6 b3 bishop to f5 here played by uh Gukesh and now he played as I mentioned this beautiful reversed London system way he's trying now of course to fix the structure here with e6 uh, c6 and the cool part is that of course the light square bishop is already out then you play h6 go with your bishop here and then you have this common London system ideas but of course with the black pieces so bishop to e2 by ding we have h6 you see this idea and now bishop to a3 which is a nice positional idea i would say the idea is i would say clear because what ding is hoping for is maybe when gukish plays the movie e6 then he could try, uh, try to maybe to play bishop to f8 and then mess up uh here black's possibility to castle kingside but i remember magnus carlson once saying that it's not really a big deal if this even happens to you so magnus really wants to mention that he has somewhere prepared also these lines where uh, he calculated also and he studied at home that this should be actually working and actually when we watch now the evaluation bar and also the computer analysis um the engine says here black is perfectly fine then after something like king to f8 you could maybe even uh start to play immediately a g5 attack king to g7 maybe also later somehow if the position allows it maybe to break and enter in the center of the board with the move e5 so i think it's really a, mm, immediate positional idea by ding to trade off the dark bishop but it's not so 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 uh so risky now for both sides but gukish plays i think again a solid line which is in my opinion perfectly fine with the black pieces uh, maybe to go into more solid more drawish positions in the round four is very, very good for him then he can maybe try to attack uh, with the white pieces because we have to say it, the more interesting games we have seen when gukish uh, has played with white and both of the games and we also mentioned ended with a winning game so now Gukish is trying again to slow down the pace of the game he 
he's preparing e6 and if in any on any of these lines bishop to f8 happens then he still has the opportunity to, to recapture the bishop with the knight we have now castling uh e6 and now we have bishop to f8 but of course now gukish can recapture uh the piece here with the knight we have now the move c4 which is uh again this flexibility we're not playing with the d pawn this d pawn can still be useful if in any of these lines black is trying to fix and really cement the position around the square e4 so you don't touch this pawn you can of course play d4 none of these lines is really a mistake in accuracy or something but it's a different story uh, when you push pawns uh, in the early opening stage so now from c4 ding keeps his flexibility and waits now black maybe to make the move knight to e4 and then he will of course kick it away we have now knight for knight to d7 again uh, gukish uh, steps back here with the knight and includes now uh, again the knight into the game knight to c3 castling c takes d5 and after e takes d5 then goes immediately into the so-called minority attack idea the minority attack is an attack in chess in which we're trying with less pawns attack more pawns against our opponent because here after move c6 the idea about this move uh, b4 by ding is to create maybe this kind of a position of course again white and black don't have to play the game like this but the minority attack idea is to maybe trade off these two pawns or these two pawns maybe even i don't know maybe a rook trade could happen and then you want to from white's perspective to reach this position this is then the perfect position for uh, for white again i would not say this is losing for black but you want to create these two weaknesses the backward pawn on c6 and also the weak square on c5 this is the the positional idea of the minority attack so ding is trying to somehow break and enter with the move b5 and of course uh create this weakness on c5 and on c6 now comes knight to d4 ding ch uh, changes now a little bit the direction of the attack because uh, he could have played of course d4 uh, which is again perfectly fine uh, you again go for the c5 score which is i think a weakness in black's camp but black would have here i think an idea that should be very very common to you uh, black has an immediate idea to play the move b5 and although you're putting many pawns on life force now suddenly white has also weakness on c4 so you can play knight to b6 and knight to c4 and i guarantee you this is an unpleasant game now and also for white again in any of these lines we have an equal game but i think uh, black would defend this also potential attack by white easily with this knight to c4 maneuver so that's why ding played again a more flexible move knight to d4 still he doesn't want to expose himself with the d4 pawn move he still wants to keep his flexibility with the move d3 we have bishop to h7 by Gukesh and now queen to b3 which becomes now a theoretical novelty a new move that we haven't seen so far this move is of course preparing further uh, this minority attack uh, supports now the b pawn and the pawn can be pushed maybe further in the continuation of the game knight to e5 by Gukesh targeting now the d3 weakness and now a4 still Ding continues with this minority attack plan uh, here on the queen side rook to c8 we have now the move a5 and a good move by um, Gukesh b6 simplifying the game here on the queen side not leaving so many weaknesses in the position and now knight you up three which is actually a really really tricky idea here ding prepared i think the first trap in the game because you cannot play knight to d3 although this is a weak score in uh, white's position uh, you cannot play it because actually the knight would be trapped with a move like knight to a2 and suddenly you don't have any scores for the knight look at this you cannot step back this square is taken this square is taken uh, all of the scores are taken and the knight is attacked twice by the bishops and queen's activity so that's why after knight you have three gukish plays now the correct move which of course uh, top grand master c knight you have three and now bishop to have three now comes d4 by gukish and now he's saying i'm not allowing d for anyway uh by by white now i move knight to e2 again a good choice i would say by black here because many of us would try maybe to move d3 which would be actually a positional mistake because um okay you have some spaces you will get an extra tempo but now from knight to g3 uh this d3 pawn 
is becoming now suddenly weakness and eventually after a couple more moves it will be probably attacked by white's activity so gukish again doesn't risk anything plays a calm d takes e3 we have now d takes e3 and now bishop to e4 again a good move by gukish not complicating anything trading off everything uh perfectly fine rook from f to d1 attack against the queen queen to e7 bishop to e4 knight to e4 and after a takes b6 and a takes b6 we have reached now this end game position this end game pawn structure which is in my opinion maybe here per perfectly fine to play for both sides maybe when the pieces are fully off the board black could have maybe a tiny little advantage because black could maybe create here uh, in this two versus one situation maybe could, uh, black could create a pass pawn mm just a tiny little maybe positional uh, positional advantage for black when it comes to the fully end game stage but when you still have pieces on the board uh, still this pawns can be attacked of course by white activity so again as uh, you see probably if you watch also the evaluation bar the evaluation bar is not really dancing here it's just staying there and um, they played simply so far a perfect game no one made any mistakes inaccuracies blunders so in any of these lines the position is really really equal if no one really makes a huge huge mistake this should be a complete draw so we have now knight to c3 uh, rook to the d8 knight to e4 queen to e4 h3 and again i would say a perfectly perfectly uh, equal position now for both sides c5 gukish now pushes the pawn we have rook takes d8 rook takes d8 b takes c5 b takes c5 you see when the pieces are still on the board when we still have the queens and the rooks on the board this could be maybe an object of white's attack in the fully end game stage when the queens are off the board and the rooks are off the board maybe a tiny little advantage for black because of the distant pass but okay uh, no one no one is risking anything rook to c1 uh here by uh, ding attacking now the pawn queen to e5 queen to c2 and now the only way that i saw maybe how the game could have been spiced up a little bit is to maybe to play tricky g6 uh, but of course no one would fall for this for instance if uh, white takes queen to c5 then you have this idea the deflection rook to d1 and then after rook to d1 queen to c5 you can pick up the game uh, pick up the queen and uh, they should be again winning uh, here for black so this was the only way that i tried somehow at home and analyzed the game to somehow somehow see at least some kind of a uh, winning opportunity now for any of the sides but uh, uh, now after queen to c2 rook to d5 agukish again simply protects the pawn and uh, as i said it's just a weakness but it cannot be attacked further g3 f5 we have king to g2 king to h7 queen to c4 uh queen to d6 and now e4 we have rook to e5 correct move again by gukish not risking anything the rook is still here we have queen to e4 a temporarily pin against um, against the rook but now gukish again simplifies the game till the end trades off the queen and nothing nothing really risky can happen we have now king to f3 of course also gukish goes uh, to towards the center with the king king to e4 and now rook to d4 we have now king to e3 by ding even if you go actively maybe with king to e5 okay probably you get the pawn on c5 but you have to also worry about your pawn on f2 about this backward pawn maybe you can try f4 but then again rook to d3 uh you can i don't know i just tried again somehow to spice up the game which was really really drawish from the beginning till the end uh king to g5 again maybe check i don't know look at this you just take a pawn white goes actively with the king we will go for this one we pick up this one again i would say completely completely drawish position so nothing nothing really can happen in this lines king to e3 rook to d5 king to e4 and we have a three time repetition the game ended now with a thematic draw so it was a perfect perfect game and the perfect game unfortunately for us ends with the draw uh they played here with 100 percent accuracy which is really really crazy in a world chess championship match uh gukish found i think here good defense against this zucker turtle opening against this nimzo larsen attack ideas uh that are present uh, i think uh, he managed to really, really E easily get out of the opening which is a good thing for gukish he didn't lose again with the black pieces tomorrow he has now a great chance again to attack the england uh, with the white pieces so okay i hope that you enjoyed this game i really didn't enjoy it so much but it's it's a tough battle of course it's a world chess championship match the stakes are high no one wants to take chances uh when it's really really not necessary so far solid raw again 
probably we have again an explosion when Gukish is playing with the white pieces. So, okay, if you want to see some other games that we have covered from this event, here are the links of some games that we have analyzed before. And if you like this content, hit the subscribe button. See you soon with some more videos. And what do we say in the end? Chess is the best, of course.